This is to be the last time he will walk down the aisle to get into the ring in boxing trunks and robe. More than the greatest boxer of all time, he was the idol whose every move in and out of the ring showed what black pride really meant. On this memorable night of December 10th, 1965, this extraordinary, this exuberant, this flamboyant farewell to boxing was his perfect curtain call. Every legend has a beginning, and 1939 was the year. The magnificent Henry Armstrong retains his welterweight crown with a one-sided decision over Ernie Roderick in London. Slick boxing Billy Kahn becomes the new light heavyweight champion. Also in 1939, a portly light heavyweight in white trunks wins the National Diamond Belt amateur title. His name on the program is listed as Jacob Lamata. Heavyweight champion Joe Lewis continues to destroy all opposition. Two-ton Tony Galento is one of the victims. In New York City, the finals of the 1939 Golden Glove boxing competition take place in Madison Square Garden. Heavyweight champion Joe Lewis is referee in one of the amateur finals, which makes the night all the more colorful. But tonight's crowd is anxiously awaiting the featherweight finals. An 18-year-old youngster has stormed through his previous bouts to reach tonight's finals. His name is Ray Robinson. Ray Robinson in white trunks comes out for round one against Louis Valentine. This is the finals in the featherweight division of the 1939 Golden Gloves. In reaching tonight's final, Robinson has shown everyone that there's a brilliant young star rising in the boxing world. In his five bouts prior to tonight, only one man has gone the full three-round distance. Robinson was awarded round one by all the judges. Here in round two, Louis Valentine in black trunks is unable to cope with this fast-punching fighter. Although only 19, Robinson appears to have a boxing finesse far beyond his years. A pulverizing right crashes off Valentine's jaw. Valentine goes down, and the referee picks up the count. Valentine is up at the count of five, and Robinson moves in to finish it. Ray would love to add Valentine to his list of KO victims here in round two. In round three, it's all Ray Robinson. Lewis Valentine in dark trunks has shown tremendous courage, hanging in there with one of the most vicious punching amateurs ever seen in Golden Glove competition. The referee separates the two fighters. Ray has impressed everyone with his masterful boxing. 19-year-old Ray Robinson is awarded a unanimous decision over a game Lewis Valentine and wins the featherweight division of the 1939 Golden Glove. The 1940 Golden Gloves is in full swing at Madison Square Garden. The next event is the semi-final of the 135-pound lightweight open class. Ray Robinson is wearing white trunks. Tony Ancona is in black. Robinson all over Ancona here in round one. Ancona is getting hit with everything in the book. Wisely, the referee steps in and awards the fight to Ray Robinson. 30 days later, the lightweight finals, Robinson versus Andy Nonel. A short right and a push sends Robinson to one knee. He is up immediately and the fight continues. Both fighters want that first place trophy and throwing leather is the way to get it. A crashing left hook hurts Nonel. A dynamite combination sends Nunnell's crumbling to the canvas. The bell ends this exciting round one. 
Here in round two, Robinson will be looking to end it. A blistering combination drops Donnell's again. A final crushing right spells the end and earns Ray the 1940 Golden Gloves Lightweight Championship. A few months after his Golden Glove victory, Ray turns professional and begins his career as a welterweight. In his pro debut, he scores a second round knockout over Ray Escaveria. Fighting only six round preliminaries, Ray records 20 knockouts in his first 28 fights. Pretty Zivik. Pretty Zivik. I had the... I started my professional career with the four round, first bout, four round on the, on the same card in Madison Square Garden when he fought Henry Armstrong, when he knocked out Henry Armstrong. And maybe 10 months from that day, he and I was fighting the top bout, the main bout in Madison Square Garden. The Ray Robinson Fitzy Zivic fight was a veritable war. Zivic, former welterweight champion, was a brawling fighter. And on this October evening, he gave Robinson the toughest fight of his young career. The two men exchanged torrid punches throughout the bout. Robinson, landing long right hand bombs in the later rounds, was awarded a hard fought decision, his 26th without a loss. 1941 is slipping by as heavyweight king Joe Lewis continues to do what he does so well. A young Ray Robinson watched in awe. I wanted to be like Joe Lewis, and I used to carry his bag for him to the gymnasium. And I started fighting when I was 15. That's why I had to borrow another name, because I wasn't old enough. And uh, then I, well, I, was, I was very successful when I started fighting. I won uh, 170 some fights before I lost the first time. Rugged Jake LaMotta puts the first blemish on Ray's record in a 10-round slugfest, a murderous fight neither man would soon forget. I always will remember, he was a very tough boy. He, he hit him with everything and he just stand, would never go. He was very tough, very good rough fighter. LaMotta forced the fight, constantly throwing punches. Robinson, caught on the ropes too often, was unable to counter effectively and lost a very close decision in 1943. Just two weeks after his loss to LaMotta, Ray is back in the ring. In New York City, Ray takes on tough Jackie Wilson. Wilson gives Robinson a good manhandling in the early rounds. Ray, scoring frequently with accurate rights, drops Wilson midway through the fight, and after 10 rounds, the decision goes to Robinson. Ray signs to fight the legendary Henry Armstrong, seen here in training for the upcoming fight. Nicknamed Hurricane Hank, former champion Armstrong will be a stern test for young Ray. Armstrong's bobbing and weaving make it difficult for Robinson throughout the fight, but Ray's lightning left jab is enough to give him the edge and the judge's decision. In February 1945, Jake LaMotta and Ray Robinson meet for the fourth time. With three exhausting battles between them already, Jake and Ray did not disappoint anyone. Robinson, now 25, was pressed to the limit, but Ray makes it three out of four as he triumphs again. Nineteen forty-six sees the invincible Joe Lewis record his twenty-second title defense, once again over Billy Kahn. The Brown Bomber followed Ray's career closely throughout the years. Ray Robinson was the best fighter that ever stepped in the ring because he could punch. And even now, when he used to back away from the one, he could knock out with a little left hook. I saw him knock out people with left hook. That way. So generally, a fighter who backs away from them, from someone can't hurt you. But Robinson, when he could hurt you, just backing away from him, same he'd come in and tell you. Just two weeks after the Lewis Con bout, Ray takes on Tony Riccio. This rare film, taken by a spectator, is the only existing record of this fight in 1946. Robinson, in magnificent form, sends the crowd home early with a fourth round TKO. There seems to be no stopping Robinson's rise to the top of the welterweight ladder. Three weeks later, Ray stops Cliff Beckett, here shown in another unique home movie of this exciting young fighter. Unbelievably, Robinson and Sammy Angott weigh in just six days later. 
With the winner promised a shot at the welterweight title, Robinson and former lightweight champion Angot fought toe-to-toe -to -toe for 10 punishing rounds. But superior hand speed and accurate counterpunching were the difference as Ray wins a unanimous 10-round decision. Ray takes on Freddy Flores as he continues to climb the welterweight ladder. Flores, a seasoned club fighter, is no match for the awesome two-handed attack of Robinson and falls in five. Shown in a home movie taken by a friend, Ray relaxes before turning in. The press and boxing fraternity have affectionately nicknamed him Sugar Ray for the sweet manner in which he demonstrates his classic moves in the ring. All that Ray has worked and trained for will be severely tested tomorrow night. Ray will enter the ring in Madison Square Garden with the welterweight championship of the world on the line. Tommy Bell on the left and Ray Robinson square off for the most important fight of their lives. They're fighting for the world title left vacant by champion Marty Servos' retirement. There can be no mistakes. Robinson, boxing brilliantly, lands repeatedly with rapier-like lefts. Bell takes everything Ray can throw and lands telling blows of his own. After a masterful 15 rounds of boxing, Ray Robinson becomes the new welterweight champion of the world. June 1947, Robinson signs to fight California's Jimmy Doyle in the first defense of his welterweight crown. What took place before and after that fight will live in Robinson's memory forever. The night before the fight with him, I, I dreamed in my sleep that I knocked him out and he died in the ring. And I got up that morning and I told the commission that I wasn't going to fight. And they said, why? And I told them what I had dreamed. I know. They said, oh, Ray, no, that's just a dream. And they called a, a Catholic priest and a minister. And they came and they talked to me and told me to go ahead with the fight. And just like we dreamed, Aldo, I hit him a left hook and he died right there in the ring. It's terrible when you have a premonition before. You know, I, I had the premonition before that this was gonna happen. And for a long time, although I couldn't fight, I couldn't fight when I started again, I, was, I couldn't hit a man hard, you know. I was very trying. 1948 sees a Frenchman, Marcel Serdan, climb to the top of the middleweight ladder with an exciting style. Serdan soon becomes a French idol when he captures the World Middleweight Championship. Just two days later, Robinson meets leading welterweight contender Kid Gavilan. Although a non-title fight, both men fought furiously and had the Yankee Stadium crowd in a frenzy. Only experience made the difference as Robinson receives the judge's nod after 10 brilliant action-packed rounds. In 1949, Jake LaMotta, the only man to defeat Robinson, signs to fight middleweight champ Marcel Serdan. LaMotta forces the action throughout and becomes the new middleweight king when Serdan is unable to answer the bell for the 10th round. Three weeks later in Philadelphia, Cuba's Kid Gavilan is given a shot at Ray's welterweight crown. Gavilan is out to revenge his loss to Robinson of one year ago. The 29-year-old Robinson is giving away six years to his younger challenger. Both men perform brilliantly as they exchange savage punches again and again. When the final bell sounds, Ray Robinson is still champion of the world. In the summer of 1950, Charlie Fuseri begins training for his upcoming title fight with Ray. With Robinson undefeated in seven years, Fuseri is faced with a monumental task. Robinson arrives at his training camp in Pompton Lakes to begin the rigors of getting in shape for the Fusari fight. To date, Sugar Ray has had 112 professional fights. He has won 111, an incredible record. The morning of the Robinson and Fusari weigh-in, suddenly a very unusual problem occurs that actually jeopardized Ray's crown. Wait a minute, Commissioner. He's all right, Vic. Now, what do you mean? No, 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 just a minute. Let's have, let's have an order here now. I don't think you've made it, Ray. 147 and a quarter. That means you're a quarter of a pound overweight. I think you can make the weight, and ordinarily, Vic, ordinarily, uh, the weighing would be at 12 o'clock. This time, it's uh, 
Uh, at 11 o'clock, we advanced up for the benefit of the newspaper men and for the fighters and the and photographers and so forth. And so he would, you would ordinarily give him an hour to make that uh, uh, quarter of a pound difference. Well, I'll tell you, Commissioner, ordinarily I would. But uh, due to the fact that this is a championship fight and Sugar's got a quarter of a pound over, I'd prefer that he give that quarter of a pound of sugar to somebody that needs it and get down to the 47 pounds according to our contract. Don't worry, he'll make it. Well, that's a very nice worry about it. He'll make it. Very patriotic gesture, but after all, so you've got to make the 47. So okay. we'll give you until 1 o'clock to make that quarter of a pound. I'll make it quarter. A few hours later. Let's try it again now. I hope you've done it this time, Ray. Eh? Looks like you've made it just a little bit under 147 pounds. And that's for the welterweight championship. What do you think of it, Vic? Are you satisfied? Well, from here, it looks okay to me. Well, then that does it, May. Congratulations to you. You made the better man win. Welterweight champion of the world, Sugar Ray Robinson, comes out for round one in the white trunks. Challenger Charlie Fusari is wearing black. This is Robinson's fifth defense of the welterweight crown that he won four years ago in a grueling battle with Tommy Bell. Both fighters feeling each other out here in the opening round. In rounds two through eight, both men boxed smartly and stayed out of trouble. A slight arm right and Fusari careens across the ring. Referee Paul Cavalier wipes Charlie's gloves and tells the fighters to continue. Fusari's hometown Jersey fans are all behind the challenger. Fusari must be careful in there. He knows Robinson carries dynamite in both hands. A series of punishing body shots forces Fusari to back off. Robinson has built up a commanding lead here in the closing moments of the bout. Robinson looks certain to retain his crown. There's the bell ending the fight. When the decision is announced, it's no surprise. Sugar Ray Robinson retains his crown with a unanimous decision over game Charlie Fusari. Now Robinson wants Jake LaMotta and his world middleweight title. With the new year just weeks away, Ray travels to Europe to campaign in the heavier middleweight division. In Paris, Gene Stock, ranking middleweight contender, is victim number one. Stock goes in two. Luke Van Dam crumbles in Brussels. And Hans Stretz is dispensed with in Frankfurt. Nineteen fifty one arrives. Robinson is with Joe Lewis and boxing commissioner James Farley in New York. Ray is presented with a coveted Edward J. Neal Award for the boxer who had done most for the sport during 1950. Ray goes into training for the biggest fight of his career, Jake LaMotta and the world middleweight title. Ray knows it will be no ping pong match. Middleweight champion Jake LaMotta is in training, deadly serious. Jake is always beautifully prepared to go the full 15 round distance if necessary. And with Robinson already being compared to legendary welterweight kings Henry Armstrong and Mickey Walker, LaMotta goes through his workouts with only one thought, stop Ray Robinson. Challenger Ray Robinson in white trunks, middleweight champion Jake LaMotta is wearing black. Both fighters have trained fiercely for tonight's battle of champions and look to be in superb condition. Champion LaMotta, the slugger, challenger Ray Robinson, the master boxer puncher. A flurry of punches sends LaMotta back toward the ropes. There's no feeling each other out as Robinson throws wicked hooks and uppercuts at the champion. This is LaMotta's third defense of the middleweight title he won two years ago from Marcel Serdan. Robinson looks like he wants to end it here in the opening round. 
LaMotta covers up from another turn of punches. In his last fight, five months ago, LaMotta KO'd Laurent Teal to successfully defend his middleweight crown. Robinson's last fight was only seven weeks ago. On Christmas Day, Ray stopped Hans Stretz in Frankfurt. In rounds two through ten, Lomala forced the action, but it was Robinson who landed the more telling blows. Here in round 11, there is no let up in the action. Lamata always trying to get inside where his body punches do the most damage. But Robinson's jolting left jab has kept Jake off all evening. Lamata has Ray cornered and opens up with hammer-like blows. Punches rain from all angles as Robinson attempts to ward off the infuriated champion. Unbelievably, Robinson comes back with a combination that stops the champion in his track. Robinson, always moving, always jabbing, seems to have recovered from that barrage of punches thrown by Lamata. Round 12 was very close. Here in the 13th round, a flurry of rights and left stagger Lamata, and he holds on. This has been one of the greatest middleweight title fights in recent memory. Robinson always throwing that stinging left jab on the champion's head has kept LaMotta off him throughout the fight. A series of devastating punches hurts LaMotta. It's unbelievable the amount of punishment the champion has withstood tonight. Only great stamina and fantastic courage are keeping him in there. Robinson lands again. The referee is keeping a close eye on LaMotta. Robinson appears to be in complete control here in the 13th round. Robinson throwing bombs. LaMotta is in desperate trouble. The referee wisely steps in and stops the fight. Ray Robinson is the new middleweight champion of the world. The new title holder receives the prestigious middleweight championship belt from Nat Fleischer, editor and publisher of the respected Ring magazine. The newly crowned champion journeys to Europe to meet some of their top middleweights and once again wreaks havoc abroad. Gene Walczak falls in Liège. On to Berlin where Gerhard Hecht crumbles in two. Meanwhile in England, 23-year-old Briton Randy Turpin does some destruction of his own as he ascends the middleweight ladder to earn a title fight with Robinson. Randy lets reporters at ringside know he's ready with a confident wink of the eye. It's London, England for the middleweight championship of the world. Challenger Randy Turpin in striped trunks. Champion Ray Robinson in the all-dark. In rounds 1 through 11, Turpin boxed brilliantly and was slightly ahead in the scoring. Here in round 12, Robinson is finding it difficult to score against the clever challenger.
Horrid punches by both fighters. And a crashing left hook by Robinson brings the crowd to its feet. By far the best exchange of the fight. Robinson must continue to land bombs like that if he intends to retain his title. This is Turpin's seventh fight this year. No one has gotten past the seventh round against the determined Englishman. There's the bell ending round 12 as a confident Randy Turpin returns to his corner. In rounds 13 and 14, Turpin continued to outbox the champion. Surprisingly, Robinson has not been able to handle this slick boxing challenger. The highly partisan crowd is on the edge of their seats, realizing Randy is just moments away from winning the middleweight championship of the world. There's the bell ending the fight. The two men affectionately embrace after 15 hard-fought rounds. The referee raises Turpin's hand, signaling that Randy is the new middleweight king. A despondent Robinson congratulates the new champion. Overnight, Turpin becomes a national hero in England. On the day following the fight, Randy's hometown of Leamington Spa welcomes their new champion in a manner befitting royalty. It was a great fight on Tuesday, and I'm naturally very proud to bring the honor of the Midweight Championship of the World back to England and Warwickshire. I must tell you how grateful I am to my manager, my trainer, my family and many others who have helped me so much throughout my career. I'm not much at making speeches, but anyhow, you all know what I mean in my own language. <laughs> Thanks a million. Ray returns home a former champion, but still loved and honored. I had a very nice time in Europe. Very sorry that uh, I did not bring back the championship, but I promise you I'll do the best I can September the 12th to bring the middleweight championship back to America. I'm sure that the new champion will do the best he can to hold that championship for England a long time. But <laughs> well, I think we both have the same idea. I kind of want to get it back here to America. Always a champion in the hearts of the people, Ray receives a scroll for his generous contributions to cancer research from Mayor Vincent Impelitieri and columnist newscaster Walter Winchell. Shortly after Ray's return, Randy Turpin arrives in New York to sign for a rematch to take place in September at the Polo Grounds. Robinson goes into training at Plompton Lakes. There's nothing that he wants more than to get back the middleweight title. Here's a dazzling display of rope skipping which the crowd loves. Joe Lewis visits with Ray just days before the all-important Turpin rematch. Robinson is ready. It's the morning of the fight, and the atmosphere at the weigh-in is electric. Ray Robinson in white and Randy Turpin in black at war in the polo ground. Robinson wants the middleweight crown back and is going right out after the champion. During the first four rounds, Robinson landed repeatedly with sharp left jabs and long rights. Here in round five, there is a look of supreme confidence in Ray Robinson.
The bell ends round five. Turpin won round six and seven. Robinson, although bleeding badly from a cut over the eye, won rounds eight and nine. Here in round ten, referee Ruby Goldstein is keeping a close watch on Ray's eye and may decide to stop the contest. An explosive combination hurts Turpin. A crushing right hand sends Turpin to the canvas here in round 10. Goldstein sends Robinson to a neutral corner and picks up the count. Turpin is up at the count of eight and Robinson moves in to finish it. Robinson reigning punches on champion Randy Turpin here in round 10. Turpin trying to protect himself from Robinson as Ray swarms all over him. <laughs> Referee Goldstein is watching the action closely and steps in to protect Turpin from receiving further punishment. Sugar Ray has done it. Robinson has regained the middleweight title by stopping courageous Randy Turpin. During the fight, up until the time of the knockout, I felt that I was ahead. And after the eighth round, my manager and I had gotten together and my trainer, Pee Wee Bill, that I should coast for a couple of rounds and go all out in the last five rounds. But after I had a little misfortune getting my eye cut, when I saw that blood, well, <laughs> I don't know. I forgot about the plans and said, this is the time to go all out. And I was very happy that uh, I was able to connect with a solid blow to put Mr. Turpin down. I'm very happy to regain the middleweight championship of the world. Baseball immortal Jackie Robinson presents an award to two distinguished athletes. It gives me a great deal of pleasure on behalf of the Harlem YMCA to present to Roy Campanella the 1951 annual Sports Achievement Award for his outstanding contribution to the Brooklyn Ball Club and for winning the Most Viable Player Award in the National League. Roy Campanella. <laughs> and to Ray Robinson, his award is not only for the wonderful way that he came back and won his middleweight championship, but also for the deeds that he did in representing all of us while he was over in the foreign countries and the wonderful work he did over there. It's certainly a, another pleasure on my part to present to you, uh, Ray Robinson, this Achievement Award. Thank you, Jackie. The words thank you are comparatively small for the way that I feel right now, but what else could you say on an occasion like this? Thank you. <laughs> 1951 is also the end of one era and the beginning of another. The Brockton blockbuster Rocky Marciano ends the ring career of Joe Lewis. Although no punches are thrown, Robinson is on the receiving end once again. Boxing Commissioner Eddie Egan and trainer George Gainsford present Ray with the 1951 Boys Athletic League Award for outstanding service to the younger generation. San Francisco, 1952. Just moments away from the opening bell. Robinson versus Bobo Olson. Champion Sugar Ray Robinson is wearing white trunks. Challenger Carl Bobo Olson is in dark. During the first three rounds, both men scored frequently. Here in round four, there is no let up in the action. Lightning combination by Robinson, and Olsen comes back with a devastating right hand to the head. Either man could end it with one punch. This is Robinson's first bout since regaining the middleweight crown from Randy Turpin six months ago. Robinson opens up again. Sharp punching by both fighters. This is the second meeting between these two men. Robinson scored a 12th round knockout over Olsen two years ago for the Pennsylvania Middleweight Championship.
Robinson won round five with accurate counter punching. Here in round six, the champion appears to have a slight lead in the scoring. An explosive combination hurts Olsen, and Robinson pummels the challenger from all angles. Torrid punches by both fighters bring the crowd to its feet. The bell ends round six. In round seven through 14, both fighters fought tactically with neither man giving an inch. Here in round 15, Robinson unleashes another barrage of punches to secure his lead in the scoring. There's the bell ending this great fight. When the decision is announced, Sugar Ray Robinson is awarded a unanimous 15-round decision over clever Carl Bobo Olsen and retains his middleweight crown. 1952 sees three young amateur boxers make headlines. The first is Charles Liston, nicknamed Sonny, in white, competing in the AAU heavyweight championships against Julius Griffin. Then 17-year-old Floyd Patterson wins the Olympic middleweight championship in Helsinki. And in the same Helsinki games, Sweden's Ingemar Johansson in dark trunks is disqualified in attempting to outdance Ed Sanders of the U.S. Former middleweight champion Rocky Graziano blasts his way through all opposition and now is in line for a shot at Robinson. Rocky has KO'd 17 of his last 20 opponents, just like this. Described as a dream match, boxer against slugger, Graziano goes into training to recapture the precious middleweight crown. Middleweight champion of the world, Ray Robinson is in white. Former champion Rocky Graziano wearing dark trunks. Robinson must be very careful with Graziano. The Rock is one of the most vicious right-hand punchers in the history of the middleweight division. Robinson opens up with a flurry of punches and Graziano comes right back with a dynamite overhead right that sends the champion to the canvas. Robinson is up immediately. The champion using that magnificent left jab to keep Graziano at a distance. Ray wants no more of Graziano's lethal right hand. Graziano trying to get inside Ray's left to deliver those punishing right-hand bombs. Robinson is content to keep away from Graziano and pick up the point, scoring with left jab. A right hand explodes off Graziano's jaw and he crumbles to the canvas. Robinson moves to a neutral corner as the referee picks up the count. It's all over with one punch. Ray Robinson successfully defends his middleweight title over former champ Rocky Graziano. Just one week later, Ray signs to fight light heavyweight champion Joey Maxim. Having won the welterweight and middleweight titles, Robinson has his eyes set on being only the third man in boxing history to hold three world championships. While Robinson Maxim is on everyone's mind, Rocky Marciano's awesome punching lifts the heavyweight crown from Jersey Joe Walcott. Light heavyweight champion Maxim prepares to defend his crown. Robinson takes a brief time out to receive another award. Sugar Ray Robinson, the Father's Day Committee is deeply honored to name you the sports father of 1952. Here's your medal and my heartiest congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Austin. At a time like this, I'm so full, I don't know just what to say, but I'm as happy as I was the night my wife presented me with my young son. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Robinson and Maxim weigh in. 
Not since Mickey Walker fought Maxi Rosenblum 20 years ago has the middleweight champion challenged the reigning light heavyweight king. I had won the welterweight and the middleweight, and I had beaten most of the fighters around in my class. And uh, they, the people wanted to see me fight uh, uh, the light heavyweight champion, Joey Maxim. And if I had uh, been able to finish the fight, I would have won the light heavyweight championship. Light heavyweight champion of the world, Joey Maxim, is wearing white trunks. Challenger Ray Robinson wearing dark. Both men throwing bombs. The temperature at ringside is over 100 degrees and could be a deciding factor in the fight. Joey Maxim won the World Light Heavyweight Championship two years ago with a 10th round knockout over Freddie Mills in London. A blistering combination backs up Maxim. Robinson out punching the light heavyweight champion. Here in round two, Robinson continues to box magnificently. A left-right combination hurts Maxim and Robinson pours it on. Another tremendous flurry sends Maxim back again. In rounds three through 12, Ray built up a commanding lead in the scoring, but the oppressive heat has taken its toll on the lighter Robinson. Maxim has pursued Robinson throughout the fight, but has been unable to score effectively. The challenger looks very tired, almost limp, here in the closing moments of the 13th round. Robinson, exhausted, staggers back to his corner with the help of his cornerman. The horrible heat has taken its toll on the ever-moving Ray Robinson. The doctor comes over to look at Ray. It's hard to see how he can continue. Joey Maxim retains his title when Ray is unable to answer the bell for the 14th round. Shortly after this fight, Robinson announces his retirement from boxing and his intention of entering show business. I've gone into show business because dancing is something I've always loved. A lot of my fans are wondering in regards to my intentions of boxing again. As yet, I have not made up my mind. 1953, Robinson, always a magnificent performer in the ring, turns to performing on a stage. Ray goes about mastering the art of tap dancing with the same flair he used to throw a five-punch combination. Here, Ray goes through a practice session. Now watch us do our continues to perform before cheering audiences, his vacated world middleweight title goes to Carl Bobo Olson in black trunks over Randy Turpin. Ray hasn't fought in over a year. Here's one of his daily routines. pretty good dancer and I went into show business and I was dancing I was dancing in Paris at the Lido and uh, 
oh, all over Europe. And uh, one day, I just got to have the feeling I wanted to fight again. When a fighter makes a return to the ring, that he's broke, desperately in need of finances, well, that's somewhat true. I need a buck as well as anyone else, I guess. But this wasn't, was definitely not the reason that I made this comeback attempt. While enjoying a very successful engagement in Paris at one of the better theaters there, uh, in show business, that is, I, I got the urge that I wanted to fight again. We couldn't come to camp and just find out what kind of condition we could get in, but mainly we wanted to find out if I could react on the, right, on the, right at the right moment and my legs and arms and my sight, everything worked together, my coordination was still uh, in my possession. And we did, we came to camp and then we announced the uh, comeback attempt to the press and here we are. Former middleweight champion Sugar Ray Robinson in white trunks. Ralph Tiger Jones is wearing dark. Torrid punches by Jones here in the opening round. Robinson in trouble. Jones raining punches from all angles. Ray comes right back. Tiger Jones pursues Ray across the ring. Dynamite punching by both men here in round one. In rounds two through nine, Jones continued to press. Here in the tenth and final round, it appears Jones is ahead in the scoring. A blistering combination of punches, but Jones stays right in there, throwing bombs of his own. Robinson looks to be the more tired of the two fighters here at the close of the fight. The bell ending the 10-round slugfest. Ralph Tiger Jones is awarded a close 10-round decision over Sugar Ray Robinson and puts a temporary haul to Ray's comeback attempt. Number one middleweight contender Rocky Castellani is Ray's only obstacle to a title fight. Since losing to Jones, Robinson has put together back-to-back -back victories, but he hasn't looked impressive. And many authorities feel that the 35-year-old Robinson is making a big mistake fighting rugged Castellani. How do you feel? I feel fine. I wish I feel as good as he said I look. You have any trouble getting down to fighting trim? I don't think anyone have any trouble in this heat, Denny. Uh-huh. It's kind of warm in here, you know. You're going to win. Well, if we didn't think he's going to win, we would never take the fight. Well, a lot of luck to you, Ray. Thank you, George. I hope you get a winner again. Thank you. A lot of luck to you, George. If you don't get a good seat at the fight, you can have mine. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sugar Ray Robinson in white. Rocky Castellani is wearing black. Rounds one and two saw both men exchange punches freely. Here in round three, there appears to be no let-up. This is a must-win fight for Ray. He wants Carl Bobo Olsen and the middleweight title. A furious combination by Robinson forces Castellani to hold on. Both men want to end it right here. In round four, Robinson scored with left jabs and won the round. Here in round five, it's still anybody's fight. A smashing left hook and short right sends Robinson to the canvas. The referee sends Castellani to a neutral corner and picks up the count. The former champion is up at nine and is met with a avalanche of leather. Ray holds on, trying to clear his head from that ripping left hook. Castellani won round six and seven with aggressive punching. Robinson boxed brilliantly to win rounds eight and nine. Here in the tenth and closing round, it's too close to call. There's 
is the bell ending this magnificent fight. Let's listen to the decision. champion Bobo Olsen is ready. It's Robinson versus Olsen for the world title. December 9th, 1955. Carl Olsen and Ray Robinson weigh in. The question, can Robinson regain the coveted crown a second time? Middleweight champion of the world, Carl Bobo Olsen in black trunk. Former champion Sugar Ray Robinson in white. Both fighters box cautiously in round one. Here in round two, the Chicago fans expect fireworks at any moment. This is Robinson's seventh fight this year. Ray has trained feverishly for Olsen as he wants the world title back desperately. The champion Bobo Olsen fought three months ago when he outpointed tough Joey Giambra. Robinson is 35 years old and is giving away eight years to the younger champion. A barrage of punches sends Olsen sprawling to the canvas. Robinson walks to a neutral corner as the referee picks up the count. Olsen rolls over but can't make it to his feet in time. Sugar Ray Robinson scores a second round knockout over Bobo Olsen and becomes the middleweight champion of the world a third time. Robinson has seen Rocky Marciano become champion and now in 1956 watches him bid farewell to boxing. Gentlemen, I would like to announce my retirement from boxing at this time. I uh, didn't ever really get hurt in the ring and I feel perfect physically and uh, probably still had two or three good fights left. While Marciano symbolically hangs up his gloves, Robinson is busy defending his title. It's Los Angeles, California, May 18th, 1956. Ray Robinson in white, Carl Bobo Olsen in black, go at it again a fourth time. Robinson pouring it on here in the opening round. Olsen holds. In rounds two and three, Robinson scored repeatedly with long right hand. Here in round four, the champion appears to be in complete control. A lightning flurry and a pulverizing left hook drops Olsen like a fallen tree. The referee is counting. It's all over. Sugar Ray Robinson successfully defends his middleweight crown with a fourth round bombing of former champ Carl Bobo Olsen. In 1956, young Floyd Patterson defeats Archie Moore to become the new heavyweight champion. In a modern day private moment, Patterson, the New York State Boxing Commissioner, was asked his opinion of Sugar Ray. I thought he was a great fighter. A great fighter. Uh, I loved his combinations and his speed. Uh, the way he operate. I admired the way Sugar Ray Robinson threw his combinations. I have never seen, of all the champions I have viewed, I have never seen a champion quite as determined as he. I have never seen a fighter uh, throw punches so short that does so much damage. The six inch punch. And uh, to this day, I've never seen anyone like him. January 2nd, 1957. Robinson has agreed to defend his title against Utah's Gene Fulmer. It's the morning of the fight, and the two men go through the official weigh-in.
Fulmer's unorthodox boxing style of lunging forward is very difficult for Robinson to defend against. Sharp punching by the champion Robinson. Both fighters throwing out all the stops here in round seven. In rounds eight through 14, Fulmer was very aggressive and seemed to have endless stamina. Here in the 15th and final round, it appears that the challenger is ahead in the judges' scoring. A good flurry on the inside by Robinson. There's the bell ending the fight. The two men congratulate each other on 15 hard-fought rounds. Moments later, the decision is announced. Gene Fulmer outpoints Sugar Ray Robinson and wins the middleweight championship of the world. Newly crowned champion Gene Fulmer is seen getting in a few strokes with former heavyweight champion Joe Lewis. Fulmer has signed to give Ray a return bout and prove that his victory in New York was no accident. Well, I think Gene Fulmer is a great comparison, a very wonderful gentleman, and a very nice champion. I think that uh, I have four fellows that I would say was equally as rough and as determined as Jake LaMotta and quite a few others. But... Uh, I all in all, I think Gene Fulmer is a great champion. Isn't he an awfully hard man to hit? Yes, he is. <laughs> My last fight proved that 15 rounds. I was trying to get a blow across, and I wasn't able to. Middleweight champion of the world, Gene Fulmer in black trunks, Ray Robinson in white. Fulmer won rounds one and two with his aggressive two-fisted attack. Former champion Robinson jabbed beautifully to win rounds three and four. Here in round five, neither man has an edge. This is Sugar Ray's first fight since losing the middleweight crown to Fulmer five months ago. Fulmer has had two fights since their meeting, taking ten round decisions from Wilfie Greed and tough Ernie Durando. Robinson at 37 is giving away 11 years to the younger champion. Fulmer misses with a windmill right hand. Ray must be very careful to stay out of Fulmer's punching range. Robinson is content to score with his long left jab and sharp combination. Referee Frank Sikora breaks the two fighters. Tough body shots by both men. A bone-crunching left explodes off Fulmer's jaw and he crumbles to the canvas. In slow motion, here's that perfectly timed left hook to Fulmer's jaw. There it is, and down goes Gene Fulmer. Ray Robinson walks to a neutral corner as the referee picks up the count. Fulmer gamely tries, but can't make it to his feet in time. Sugar Ray Robinson scores a sensational fifth-round knockout over tough Gene Fulmer, and for the fourth time, wins the middleweight championship of the world. Carmen Basilio in white trunks regains the welterweight championship in 1957 with a ninth-round bombing of Johnny Saxton. Basilio sets his sights on the middleweight division and champ Robinson. June 1957, Robinson and Basilio signed to meet three months later in New York with a middleweight championship on the line. Here at the pre-fight physical, both men appear to be in superb condition, a true dream match. The constant punching welterweight champion Basilio versus the man referred to as pound for pound, the greatest fighter in the ring.
Sugar Ray Robinson in white and Carmen Basilio in black have been slugging it out for 10 brutal rounds. Here in round 11, the battle continues. Dynamite punching by Robinson. Basilio covers up. Unbelievably, Basilio comes back with a turn of punches that forced the champion back against the ropes. It's all Basilio here in round 11. Champion Robinson getting hit with punches from all angles. Welterweight champion Basilio wants that middleweight crown right here and now. Here in round 12, the two fighters continue to exchange furious punches. It's Robinson coming on. Two left hooks crash off Basilio's jaw and force him backward for the first time in the fight. The champion scores again with Pondra's rights and lefts that send Basilio careening across the ring. Basilio taking everything Robinson can throw and coming back for more. Basilio survived the blasting in round 12 and unbelievably looks to be the fresher of the two here in round 13. Deadly punching by Basilio forces the champion to back off. Basilio won round 14 by a very narrow margin. Here in the 15th and final round, the challenger is slightly ahead in the scoring. A sensational flurry by Robinson here at the closing moments of this great fight. Basilio scores on the inside and hurts Robinson. Ray holds on. receive a standing ovation from the stadium crowd. Announcer Johnny Addy is ready to announce the judge's decision. Judge Adi Idala scores it. Nine, five, one even, Basilio. Robinson. The other judge, Bill Recht, scores it. Eight, six, one even. The winner and new middleweight champion of the world, Carmen Basilio. Again, Ray is a former champion. No one has ever won the middleweight title five times. Ray is obsessed with the idea. A rematch between Basilio and Robinson is a natural. In 1958, Ray gets his shot in Chicago. There's no love lost between these two men, and they're both in magnificent condition. It promises to be a real grudge fight. Carmen and all the excitement after the way in just one question. I've polled 10 sports writers from around the nation here, nine of them picked Sugar Ray to win by a knockout tonight. What's your answer to that? Nine of them are wrong. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you. Middleweight champion Carmen Basilio in black trunks. Former champion Robinson in white. Both men look to be in great shape and prepared to go 15 rounds if necessary. Robinson's left jab has opened a small cut above Basilio's left eye. Although minor now, with 14 rounds to go, it could be important later on. Only seconds left in this opening round. A blistering flurry at the bell, and the fighters have to be separated. Champion Basilio won rounds two and three with good punching to the body. Robinson looked to be in control in rounds four through nine. Here in the tenth round, Basilio's left eye has swollen badly, and he's having difficulty seeing out of it.
A superb one-two by Robinson staggers Basilio, but the champion keeps pressing forward. A right uppercut just misses, and Basilio wades in. Basilio's eye looks completely closed. Another combination by Robinson. Basilio taking everything Robinson can throw. Robinson lands a straight right to open round 11. Only tremendous courage is keeping Basilio in there to face this masterful Ray Robinson. Robinson continues to land that stinging left jab and pile up the points. Basilio is hurt. Ray opens up and rains punches from all angles. Basilio won't give an inch. Both fighters throwing haymakers. This is the best round of the fight. Basilio was given round 12 by a very narrow margin. But here in round 13, the champion looks very weary from the constant battering he's received all night. Rushing punches by Robinson stagger the champion. Basilio continues to amaze everyone with his courage and the punishment he can withstand. The bell ends round 13. Round 14 was too close to call. Here in round 15, Robinson continues to pour it on. The referee separates the two men. Deadly, accurate punching by Robinson. Ray scoring on the inside as Basilio holds on. Basilio is unable to counter against this brilliant boxing master. There's the bell ending this great battle. Minutes later, when the decision is announced, Ray Robinson is once again middleweight champion of the world. An incredible fifth time. The next morning, the news is heralded around the world. Sugar Ray Robinson has won the middleweight championship a fifth time. An incredible accomplishment. Sugar, how do you feel this morning? You got any extra pain? Many of them. Every, every bone, <laughs> uh, over a hundred of them all over my body. Feel like ten men beat me up last night. Uh, Ray, after the fight last night, Carmen said he could have gone 15 more mm -hmm. rounds. How did you feel after 15? Well, I'm, I'm, I'll say this. If he could have went 15 more, he wouldn't have won them with me. <laughs> Ray, what did you do differently this time that you apparently didn't do in September? I won the middleweight championship of the world. <laughs> sure, what would you like to do most right now? Go home and play with my son and stay home and let my wife baby me. <laughs> Ray says he wants to be babied. So what are you planning to do about that? As much as I can and as often as I can. Cook his favorite food? And so of forth. course. The best food, the best of everything for this sugar daddy. The retired, undefeated heavyweight champion, Rocky Marciano, was thrilled by the robinson Basilio War and had these comments. Did you notice how great Robinson looked in the early rounds? Just like the Robinson of old, classic boxer, and, and in little common Basilio, he fought the roughest guy in the division in the last 20 years. It was just a great fight, a natural, the boxer against a slugger, you know, like Dempsey and Tunney. Robinson, in the twilight of his career, fought his greatest fight. He had to plan every move. His great experience won him this fight, and uh, probably his last great fight. 
Ray plays stickball with the neighborhood kids and doesn't receive much encouragement from the local fans. Ray, always warm-hearted and partial toward children, gives freely of his time when youngsters are concerned. It doesn't appear from this exhibition that Ray is going to be called up by any major league club, but a final hit saves the day. Robinson arrives in Los Angeles in the spring of 1959, and throngs of fans turn out. A rumor has been spreading that Robinson's trip to California is to finalize negotiations for Ray to meet heavyweight champion of the world, Floyd Patterson. I think the last time I saw you, you were fighting Bob Olson out here. <laughs> yeah, I think well, so. Well, we want to welcome you to uh, Los Angeles again, and I know uh, most fans are interested right now in that big offer that uh, broke the other day, that million dollar offer for you to fight heavyweight champion Floyd Patterson. Have you got any comment on that? Well, I'm here to, uh, to see uh, Mr. Weintraub about the, the proposition. We're going to uh, try to complete negotiations while I'm here. See just what we can do. All plans for the super fight of champions evaporate when Sweden's Ingemar Johansson in black trunks wins the heavyweight title from Patterson. In later years, Johansson gives his impressions of Sugar Ray. Well, uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, I have seen several times, and uh, he's about the best boxer I've ever seen. And you know, he liked when he could clinch the guys up, up, to, up, up to the ropes. And every punch he threw away was a knockout punch. Robinson arrives in Boston in January 1960 to complete training for his next world title fight. Boston's flashy Paul Pender is the challenger, and Pender's hometown fans do some scouting for their hopeful. Champion Robinson in white trunks, challenge of Paul Pender in dark. In round one, neither man had an edge. Here in round two, Robinson begins to press the attack. The highly partisan Boston fans pulling for Pender to wrest the crown from the champion. Pender attempting to avoid that rapier left-hand jab. Paul is boxing very carefully and appears content to outmaneuver the champion. In rounds two through 14, Pender relentlessly continued to jab and move. While not exciting, the tactic placed most of the stress on the legs of the 39-year-old Robinson. Here in the 15th and final round, ringside reporters have Paul ahead in the scoring. There's the final bell. The Boston fans go wild, feeling their man has won. When the verdict is announced, Paul Pender is the new middleweight champion of the world. Once again, Robinson is a former champion, but not Floyd Patterson. In 1960, with one crushing left hook, Floyd becomes the first man in history to regain the heavyweight crown. A Robinson-Pender rematch will follow this Patterson triumph. Boston, June 10th, 1960. Middleweight champion Pender in dark trunks, Robinson in white. Prior to tonight's fight, to no one's surprise, Pender stated his fight plan will be to jab and run exactly as he did in their first meeting. A quick flurry by Robinson and Pender holds on. In rounds two through 14, Pender's calculated tempo remains the same. Here in the closing moments of the fight, Pender appears confident that he has won again. The final bell. When the judge's decision is announced, Paul Pender wins a very close 15-round decision over Sugar Ray Robinson to retain the middleweight title. The fall of 1960 brings on the Rome Olympic Games and another world champion to be. Young Cassius Clay of Louisville, Kentucky wins the light heavyweight gold medal. Boxing authorities who observed Clay's victory saw a distinct resemblance to the boxing style of Ray Robinson. The middleweight championship has passed from Pender to Gene Fulmer. Fulmer, in black trunks, defends the title against former champion Carmen Basilio. Fulmer's knockouts impress everyone. March 1961, Robinson challenges Fulmer in the Las Vegas Convention Center. Middleweight champion Fulmer took round one. 
Robinson boxed well to gain a slight edge in round two. Here in round three, Fulmer is looking for an opening. A devastating overhand right crashes off Robinson's jaw and staggers Ray. Fulmer throwing bombs at Robinson as Ray vainly tries to avoid the ponderous rights and lefts. Gene wants to end it right here in round three. The bell ends the round, but Fulmer wants to continue and must be restrained by the referee and Ray's cornerman. Fulmer took round four with hard right hands to the body. Here in round five, it's still early, and anything can happen when these two start throwing bombs at each other. A great combination by Robinson, and Fulmer covers up for the first time in the bout. Robinson came on strong and won round six through ten. Fulmer came back to carry the last four rounds. Here at the end of the bout, it's anyone's fight. The referee tries to separate the two men. The final bell ends this 15-round war. The two men congratulate each other on a great fight. Gene Fulmer is awarded a 15-round split decision over former five-time champion Sugar Ray Robinson. 1964, while fighting occasionally, Robinson has been assisting challenger Cassius Clay in preparation for a title fight with champion Sonny Liston. Young Cassius gets in his licks at the formidable Liston by screaming his allegiance to Robinson. The Clay-Liston fight saw the birth of a great new champion. Throwing torrid combinations and boxing brilliantly throughout, young Cassius demolished the ugly bear, Sonny Liston. The fight was over in seven rounds. After Clay's victory, Robinson and the new champion are received by the astonished press. While Robinson greatly influenced Clay's boxing style, when it came to press interviews, the new champion was in a class by himself. Many years later, as Muhammad Ali, he gave his opinion of Robinson. To me, in his time, and even today, the pound for pound, when they say Sugar Ray Robinson was the greatest fighter pound for pound, meaning that I imagine if he was a heavyweight fighting the same style, he'd be the greatest. I would have to admit, I would have to say yes. I have his fight films, I've watched the films, you have them. That man was beautiful, timing, speed, reflexes, rhythm, every body, everything was beautiful. And to me, still, I would say pound for pound. I say I'm the greatest heavyweight of all times, but pound for pound, I still say Sugar Ray Robinson was the greatest of all time. It's now 1965. During the past few years, Robinson has fought in many locales against mostly nondescript fighters. Ray has been a professional for 25 years. He has held the welterweight crown and was middleweight champion of the world five times. Yet, he desires more. I'm boxing because I've had a wonderful, wonderful career as a fighter. I think I've certainly been a very blessed man. And I would like to end this career with a great climax if I possibly can. If I can regain the middleweight championship for the sixth time, I most certainly would then say it's been a very wonderful career, and thank God and all the wonderful people who's prayed for my success. Ray continues to campaign in the middleweight division to establish himself once again as a contender for the world title. At 45 years of age, his next fight will be the last time he will ever step into a ring. On November 10, 1965, Sugar Ray Robinson will take on the number one ranking contender, Joey Archer. Sugar Ray Robinson in white trunks, Joey Archer in black. The first three rounds were very close. Here in round four, both men begin to throw caution to the wind. A 
Again, they stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and slug it out. Robinson must win tonight to put himself back in contention once again for middleweight honor. Robinson and Archer split rounds five and six here in round seven. Archer lands a stinging left-right combination that sends Robinson crashing to the canvas. The referee counts over Robinson after that perfectly timed combination by Archer. Robinson says he's all right, and the fight continues. Torrid punches by both fighters. Archer won rounds eight and nine with accurate rights to the body and head. Here in the tenth and final round, Joey is definitely ahead in the scoring. There's the bell signaling the end of this great fight. While the fighters continue to receive a standing ovation, the judge's decision goes to Joey Archer with a hard-fought victory over Ray Robinson. In November 1965, just weeks after his loss to Joey Archer, Robinson announces his retirement from boxing. It has been a magnificent career that has spanned a quarter of a century and 21 world championship fights. As a parting gesture which had wildly enthusiastic approval of the world press, the boxing fraternity honors Ray with a retirement party. A final salute to Sugar Ray Robinson. Madison Square Garden, December 10th, 1965. A standing room only crowd has come to pay homage to a man they have cherished and revered for over a quarter of a century. His name represents the essence of classic grace and boxing perfection. Sugar Ray Robinson steps into the ring to gratefully acknowledge the thunderous applause. Never has the boxing world been so unanimous in its affection and never was it so richly deserved. Ray stands in the same Madison Square Garden ring where 26 years ago he won the Golden Gloves and captured the World Welterweight Championship. This is a night he doesn't have to knock out an opponent to be declared the winner. There are 20,000 judges tonight and they're all declaring him their permanent all-time champion. Joining in the ceremony tonight are four men, all champions themselves. They have come to join in honoring Ray Robinson. Clever Bobo Olson, middleweight champion of the world, whom Ray defeated to win the crown the third time. Honduras punching Gene Fulmer, from whom Ray won the middleweight title a fourth time. Magnificent Carmen Basilio, welterweight and middleweight champion, from whom Ray won the title a fifth time. The great Randy Turpin, whom Ray defeated to win the championship the second time. The two men affectionately embrace each other. Turpin, Fulmer, Basilio, Olson, once Robinson's deadly adversaries, surround Sugar Ray to demonstrate their respect and admiration for this very special champion.
for world champions of the future, Ray Robinson's 25-year tenure is not a hard act to follow, simply because it cannot be improved upon. For boxing history has recorded centuries of great courageous champions, but his fabled name represents the classic mastery of the sport. He brought to the ring a fierce pride, brilliantly exhibited in his boxing ballet, concluded with an explosion of accurate, devastating punches. For world champions who preceded or followed Sugar Ray, the highest and most dignified honor is simply to be compared to him. His invincible spirit represents an ideal of courage that has captured the imagination of a generation of sports fans, fans who hold him in reverence. Sugar Ray Robinson, the greatest fighter of all time, pound for pound.